Okay, good afternoon everyone. And today's, in today's lecture, I'm going to talk about network. And in the beginning of this semester, I was planning to put this topic into one lecture. But I couldn't do that because it has too much content. So I want to split this topic, network, into two lectures. And today will be the first lecture. And starting from today, the lectures will be extremely important. If the previous uh, lectures are important, this will be extremely important. Because these are things you are not going to get from elsewhere. And can I have a short survey before the class begins? I mean, uh, for those of you who have done some homework, who have done my homework, do you think it's too difficult or moderate or easy? So who think the homework is, I mean, difficult? Could you raise your hand? Difficult? Anyone think the homework is difficult? So who think the homeworks are moderate? Moderate? So who think the homework is easy? Okay. So most of you think the homework is moderate. Okay. So in the beginning of this lecture, I want to make some collection, make a, co make a correction about my lecture one, uh, page 18. In that slide, I was talking about what simulators are available. And I listed Cosin. And I mentioned here, Cosin is developed by MacTrans and FHWA, Federal Highway Administration. But I received an email from uh, QOVA, the principal of PTV America. And he told me this paragraph. Let me read it to you. Mac Trans is the owner and exclusive developer of the software, Cosim. FHWA originally developed Cosim model, but they do not currently support nor endorse Cosim as their model. And FHWA hasn't been actively involved with development of Cosim since the 1990s. So I would like to remove this FHWA from uh, the owner of Cosin or the developer of Cosin. Okay? Now, today's lecture is about network. Here I listed some important elements of a real world uh, surface transportation network. I mean, it's not including any uh, ships uh, or airplanes or no, no pipelines, it's only for surface transportation. And we can categorize the elements into links, lanes. Uh, lanes are included in links, and nodes or junctions. And these are for mixed mode, transit, and roadside units. I don't want to explain any uh, all of them because some of them are very uh, obvious. But these bold, these blue bold items are the ones that we are going to talk about today. We are going to learn how to model them. And others will be explained in following lectures, later lectures. Okay? And does everyone, everyone know what HOV is? I mean, do, do you know that, HOV? Can anyone from outside? Hi, uh, what's that? Yeah, Can anyone, uh, I mean, from outside uh, of civil engineering, answer this question, what HOV is? HOV means high occupancy vehicle, such as when you are carpooling, you have more than two people in the vehicle, and that's called HOV. And links include freeway and urban highway and local roads and ramp. And links, we are going to talk about HOV lane, bus lane. And these links are called managed links because they are exclusive for a certain type of vehicle. And parking lane, stop sign. And here are some, uh, some concepts that, that you are not frequently using. So I want to explain that. The first thing is called ramp metering. So in ramp metering, here is the freeway, here is a ramp. When there are too many cars in the freeway, the capacity of the, I mean, the uh, performance of the freeway will decrease significantly. So that's why they want to set signals on the ramp to limit, to control 
the number of vehicles entering the freeway. This is called the ramp metering. And this is TWFTL, two-way left-hand lane. Okay, these lanes are called two-way left-hand lanes. And changeable lane. For example, this lane, for a certain time period, it will be uh, westbound. And for all other times, it will be eastbound. These are changeable lanes. So these are basic concepts. And here is a demonstration of pocket lane. Pocket lanes are permanent lanes that are not present for the entire length of a link. So for example, this is a link. And only this part, in this part, you can find an extra lane for left turn movement. And this is called pocket lane. OK, or slip lane. So these are some hard to understand concepts I want to introduce first. And for today's lecture, I will mostly doing uh, I'm mostly doing demonstration. So I will talk about only a few concepts. Here is the network abstraction, which means how you uh, uh, how you represent your network in computer or in your algorithm. There are basically two methods. The first method is called link node abstraction. And this is frequently used. I mean, when you are learning some uh, graph theory, and if you do network optimization, you typically use link node uh, abstraction. But another way is called link connector. Let me use a very simple and easy to understand example to tell you what link node mode is or link connector mode is, no more abstraction. So let's talk about link node first, link node model. This is an intersection, OK? And in order to represent this intersection in link node mode, we just put this intersection as a one node. And we put one node here, one node here, and two nodes there. And this left turning can be modeled as a uh, pocket lane, left hand pocket lane of this link. So we have one node and four links to represent this area. Are we clear about this? Okay. But let's expand this area a little bit more to the left and see what happens. This area actually is very close to Kettle Hall. If Kettle Hall is here, this is Hamilton Road, this is Audubon Highway. The problem is here is a U-turn. Here is a U-turn. People, uh, drivers can make a U-turn here. In order to represent this U-turn, what should we do? We create a link to represent this U-turn, right? And because we represent this U-turn, we have two nodes here, two nodes here, and as a sequence, this link that we originally de uh, represented by one link. This row, represented by one link, can no longer be represented by one link. So we have to create two links, right? There's one link here, one link there, OK? And actually, four links. Do you understand why? So this row, this row, for each direction is represented by one separate link. And to connect them, we have to create a central link. Here, a short link to connect about directional. Okay, you can see the arrow for the directions. Right? That's necessary. <coughs> and because of this, this left turn pocket link can no longer be modeled as a part of this link. Because if we model this left turn pocket link as in this link, it has to go this way to the upper part, right? If it's a left turn pocket lane here, then a vehicle, if it's passing this point, it has to go that way. But actually, it's going this way. And that's why we have to create another node to break this link into two links and connect this thing. Right? And similar thing for that, uh, the other side. And we have to create two bidirectional links here and there. Right? Any question about this? No? In this way, 
in order to model the traffic signal in this area, we will have to make uh, to model traffic signals for, for both nodes. Actually, there was only one node, but in our link node setting, we have to create two traffic signal controllers, and they have to be synchronized. And if we take a look at this node, it has one, two, three, four, five approaches. This node also has one, two, three, four, five approaches. So you are going to create two nodes with two traffic controllers, signal controllers, and each controller has to control five approaches. Okay? And the resulting network will be two nodes plus 12 links. But how do you deal with traffic signals? Uh, that would be very difficult. So here is a problem I'm talking about. And in this, uh, this lecture, I'm not going to tell, talk about how to implement this. I just want to present a problem in the link node diagram or link node setting. Okay, what? To overcome that for the 439 project last year, we just had them do U-turns at the intersection, which is not really solving anything. Right, I agree. So we have to make some simplification <coughs> to overcome this obstacle, right? But let's talk about link connector uh, setting. In link connector, connector setting for the same area, we just create one link for each road. So two links here, two links there, and two links. So these will become eight links, eight unidirection link, unidirectional link. Then for here, we can simply create a short link called a connector to connect them. So this is a connector. And at this place, in order to model the through movement, we create another connector. Right turn, another connector. And this left turn, just a connector, but from here to there. Okay? And similarly, we can create connectors for that approach, for this approach, and from this, from this approach, and from this approach, this approach. Then totally, we have one node six links, actually uh, eight links, sorry, and 13 connectors, you can count them. Let me quickly modify it. It's eight links. <coughs> okay, so this is the link connector diagram. But you see, in this way, uh, in link connector diagram, we are no longer using node as part of the algorithm. But we can use a node to represent a collection of connectors. So a node is then an abstract concept. A node is a collection of connectors. So there should be two nodes. One node, still one node. There is another collector there. Uh, this in this part we don't need to model it as a node. A node is only used for traffic signals. So you a node is a group of connectors. The reason you want to create a node is for the later signal control phase. Okay? So this part, you don't have to mo create a traffic signal. So you just leave the connector there. You don't have to worry about this. This is just connected. But in this part, you want to model a traffic control controller. So you create a virtual concept called a node to include all these connectors. And in this way, you have what? Uh, do connectors have uh, actual length? No. Oh, yes, yes, yes. They have actual length. Sorry. The node has no uh, position, no accurate position. The node itself has no position. But the connectors, they are similar to the links. And they are real. They represent a real connector. Um, do stop sign and yield sign consider as a signal? No. Okay, so this is the link connect diagram. Now, this is